Hey guys, how's it going? Hi. Woo! I hear some enthusiasm out there. That's great. We have an awesome author about to present for you guys. Well, first, we got to introduce him, right? My name is Sasha Dowdy. I work here in the Library of Congress. Next door, you could say. Library of Congress Young Reader Center. Young Reader Center is a really special place for kids and teens and family to come and learn about the Library of Congress treasures and collection and even attend field trips and author programs. So it's worth checking out. Uh, it's my honor, I'm really excited to introduce Max Brelier today. He is the New York Times and USA Today bestselling author of more than 30 books and games. He writes stuff and he reads stuff and he plays video games for research. Right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's the author of the Galactic Hot Dog series, the Eerie Elementary series, the best-selling graphic novel Pop Tropica, Mystery of the Map, and of course, the last Kids on Earth series. Who's excited about this series? His fifth book, The Last Kids on Earth and the Midnight Blade, comes out in just a few weeks, but I think some of you already have it in your hands. He also wrote books for properties like Lego, Adventure Time, The Regular Show, Steven Universe, and Uncle Grandpa. According to librarians and teachers, Max get kids excited about reading and even writing their own stories. He does a really great job of encouraging everybody to work hard while having fun and being creative. And that's a recipe for an awesome author talk. So let's dive in, shall we? Let's give a warm welcome to Max Brailier. Hey guys! Oh. Hey guys, that sound alright? I didn't know, I didn't realize that like my stupid laptop would be like all Mega Man in everybody's face. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do a little PowerPoint thing at some point. Okay, it's up to cool. Okay. So my name is Max, I'm an author. Um, I write a bunch of things. You guys just heard about some of them. And I'm gonna talk to you guys today a little bit. Uh, about a lot of things, and then when we're done, um, I'm gonna see if there's time. Hopefully there'll be time. Maybe we can do some questions. Uh, sound okay? That sound good? All right, cool. So over there is oh, down there I can see it. I can, yeah, I can see it up there. Um, is the Last Kids on Earth series, and the newest one, The Midnight Blade, comes out on September 17th. But actually, it's here early, which is I didn't know that, and it's like really scary to see all these people reading it because I've never seen anybody's reaction to it before. Um, I'm kind of scared right now. Terrifying. Does anybody have one in their hands? Of the new one? Can I hold it up to show you what it looks like? Thanks, man. So this is the new. This is the new one, and it comes out on um, September 17th, and that is the same day also that the Last Kids on Earth Netflix series premieres. Which is really exciting for me, um, and it's going to be very cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's got a lot of cool voices, and I don't know. I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to talk to you guys about me as like a kid, what I was like as a kiddo, and how I got the idea for the whole Last Kids on Earth thingy. Um, so my kind of like story of figuring out like what I wanted to do starts, um, Max, age eight, eating frozen pizza, it was Elio's, my favorite, and I was clearly um, an extremely cool kid and super popular. That part is a lie. Not at all. Um, and I had no idea that I wanted to be a writer or tell stories or anything like that. Um, I did think that I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up, though. Any of you guys, like any of you kids, know what you want to do when you're older? Any have any ideas? How about you? Scientist, paleontologist, vet, and one other thing that you can't think of. That's awesome. A writer? No, that's no. Wait, a, zoo, a plastic surgeon? A zookeeper. Oh, okay. A zookeeper and plastic surgeon kind of sound maybe similar in my head. Um, okay, so uh, when I was a kid, I thought that I was going to grow up to be a professional baseball player, right? I was like totally convinced, 100% certain. And I joined Little League, and I was really excited about Little League. And I spent all this time like practicing in the backyard, like playing catch and. Um, fielding grounders, the worst thing in the world. And after like a lot of hard work and a lot of practice, hours and hours and days and days of practice, I ended up being the worst baseball player ever. 
I was absolutely terrible. Um, this isn't me, but this is like how bad it looked when I would try to play baseball. It was not good. It was really bad. In fact, I was so bad that the Little League coach had to make up a new fake position just for me called extra deep right field, which is not a real thing. And what that means is they put you so far out in the outfield that you're not even part of the game anymore, and that way you can't mess it up for the other kids because you can't catch. And so they would put me out there in extra, 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 extra deep right field, like a mile from home plate. And like I knew what was going on, and my, like, my dad knew what was going on, it was sad. And I would like sit down in the outfield though, which my dad hated during the game. He would get so mad. Um, and I would daydream. Do any of you guys ever daydream? Yeah? It's a good amount of hands. Okay, good. So daydreaming is like a really important, really important part of how I figured out what I wanted to do, that I wanted to tell stories, all that stuff. And so when I would daydream, I would always daydream about adventure stuff. Like I loved adventure movies when I was a kid. The first thing I ever loved was movies. So I would daydream about adventure stuff with like heroes who are cool looking like I am not. Villains and big epic battles. This is the stuff that I loved, and this is the stuff that I would daydream about. And what I would do is, I would be like daydreaming on the walk home from school, or on the bus, or in class, and I would imagine myself as the hero in like these like big epic stories. And so, like I said, like I loved movies, and I didn't become though, I didn't become like a big reader until I discovered comics and graphic novels. That's what got me like really excited about reading. That's what got me really into reading. And so my favorite comic graphic novel hero ever, Wolverine. Love Wolverine. So like I said, I'd be sitting in class or laying on the couch after school and I would daydream and I would imagine myself as Wolverine. Which looked a little bit like that. And and I'd be walking to school or sitting in class and imagining Wolverine, like, stomping down the halls of my school. Because at the same time, Darth Vader was stomping down the halls of my school. And I would imagine these huge epic battles about, like, Darth Vader coming and Wolverine. And, like, they would get into a huge fight. And then a bunch of stormtroopers would show up. And then, in this daydream, I would always, like, stand up in the middle of class, be like, it's cool, guys, I got this, draw my lightsaber, defeat all the bad guys, and then become the most popular kid in school. And all the girls would maybe have crushes on me. I used to imagine that too. So that's what I would daydream about. And around that same time, I had this like, sort of like annoying, nagging feeling. I don't know if anybody else ever feels like this, but I felt like I was like the one kid at school that wasn't like good at anything. Um, like, every, like I moved around when I was a kid and every school that I ever went to, there was always like the one kid who was like the fastest kid in the school, or the person who was like best at drawing, or somebody who was really good at video games or dancing. But I was like mediocre to terrible at everything. And I hated it. I wanted to be like good at something. And then one day I realized that maybe, I can't believe I left that up there for so long. I forgot that it just sits there. That's really embarrassing. Uh, like, I was playing with this last night, and I forgot that that means a doubt that just sits there while I talk. Uh, so uh, I realized one day that maybe there was actually one thing that I was, like, slightly okay at. Any of you guys know what that might be? Daydreaming? Yes, daydreaming. <clears throat> I realized that I was good at daydreaming. I know it's, like, a really weird thing to think you're good at. I went home after school one day, and I was like, Mom, guess what? I finally figured out what I'm best at at school. And she was like, great, finally. Is it like math or science? And I was like, no, daydreaming during class. She's like, oh, great. But then I realized something else, that all the stuff that I loved, like movies, comics, graphic novels, those are all stories. And I realized that daydreaming is also a way of telling stories. And when I realized that, that's how I knew that what I wanted to do was tell stories. And so, when I got way, 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 way older, 
I said, I'm going to try to be a writer and tell stories and daydream as a job. And so what I did was I got a job working with books in book publishing. I helped um, write the stuff that goes in the back of books. You turn a book over, it says what it's about. I used to have to write that. <coughs> Excuse me. But what I really wanted to do was write the inside part, the adventure. And so one day, after a lot of begging, I got a chance to write some books for shows like Cartoon Network. And I got to write a whole bunch of them. And I was the published author. And I was like, success, yes. But I wanted to write my own story, my own sort of adventure. And so I did a scary thing, and I quit my job, and I said I was going to be a full-time writer, spend all my time trying to write my own adventure story. I lived in New York City, so I had a very small apartment, and so I needed an office to write, so I turned my closet into an office, and I filled it with all my favorite toys and action figures, all my favorite stuff as inspiration, all my favorite video game characters like Zelda and things like that. And I said, what am I going to write about? And I thought about, what did this kid love? What sort of book would this kid have wanted to read? What's the stuff that I loved most back in the day and still love today? And those things, giant monsters, zombies, and stories about buddies having adventures. Those are like three of my favorite things. But lots of authors could write about that. And I realized, Indiana Jones told me, that you still need one thing to make your story special, original, and all your own. It's got to be kind of original, right? And so I thought about school, and you guys ever had like a bad day at school? <clears throat> you know those, like, bad, like, those days you like, want to come home and like, crash and lay down face first on the couch and sleep for like nine weeks straight? I would have those days. Maybe I did something embarrassing at school, or I was like an anxious, nervous kid, and that was hard. And so what I would do when I would come home is I would take a book and go into my backyard. And in my backyard, I had a treehouse. That's me in the treehouse. And I loved that treehouse. And I would go up there, and I would read. And I would, when I was reading up there, I would kind of escape and forget all about whatever it was that was like stressing me out at school, making me sad, making me sick to my stomach, making me nervous. And I love the way that stories, and for me it was like adventure stories, can make you forget about that stuff for a little while. And that's why I love that treehouse. And I also loved it because uh, one time in fifth grade, my best friend Chris climbed up there, we had a zip line, he went down the zip line, he fell off, he broke his arm, and it was the coolest thing that I ever saw happen ever. Okay, but I said, all right, I know I'm going to write about giant monsters, zombies, buddies having adventures, and I remembered the treehouse too, and I added that, and that became The Last Kids on Earth. So The Last Kids on Earth is the story of Jack Sullivan. He's the hero, happens to be an orphan. One day he's on the way to school. Uh, school bus pulls up, and he looks out the window, and he sees zombies and giant monsters, as Jack calls it, total monster zombie chaos. Uh, Jack's school bus gets picked up by a giant monster. He falls out, tumbles, hits the ground, stands up, looks around, sees more zombies, sees more monsters, and he does what I would do, and he totally freaks out and runs all the way home. When he gets home, he discovers his foster family is missing. They're gone. So he climbs up into this backyard treehouse, which is way cooler than mine was. He spends the next couple weeks in there, too terrified to go outside, surviving on nothing but, like, Sour Patch Kids and cotton candy. After a while, though, he works up the courage to go outside. When he does, he discovers that zombies and giant monsters have taken over his hometown and, as far as he knows, the entire world. But Jack is a very, like, gung-ho sort of hero. He's like, I'm not going to let the end of the world ruin my day. So he goes out in search of his best friend, Quint Baker, and then they connect with Dirk Savage, a classmate of theirs who's, like, not the nicest kid in school. They kind of realize after the end of the world, they all got to team up and work together. And they get into the like, adventures, they have fun, and then they go on a quest. Jack wants to find and rescue his classmate, June Del Toro, who he believes is this sort of damsel in distress just waiting for a brave boy to come along and rescue her. 
and I will spoil part of the first book um, by saying that she is not, and much of what the end is about is Jack realizing uh, that he's just a really, really sort of dumb sixth grade boy when it comes to knowing things about girls, and that she is way tougher and way cooler than any of them. Along the way, they anger Blarg, the bad guy, who's scary and evil and bad news. He begins hunting them, so they turn their treehouse into less of a house and more of a full-blown tree fortress. And that is the story of the first book in this series. And from there, each book gets bigger and crazy and weirder. Um, and as I was doing this, I was kind of putting this together, thinking about the new book, I started thinking about a lot of the stuff that's like in the books that like, I can't believe that I'm, write, I'm writing number six right now. And I couldn't believe like how many things I have done and like have happened to these kids. And so I thought I would sort of show a few of the things that I kind of just love the most in, in the series. And I'm trying to go through it really quickly. Let me see if I can. OK, bear with me. Goofy zombies, pet monsters, bad dancing, ping pong, ping pong fight scenes, Star Wars joke, it's a trap, cuteness, real life Mario Kart, Mad Max type marauders, the Louisville Slicer, as Jack calls it, basically my lightsaber. Monsters escaping IMAX screens. Heroic monsters. Wild West type showdowns between Jack and monsters. Post-apocalyptic James Bond Mad Max type vehicles. There are lots of those, there's a bunch more in the new one. Goofy Yoda type monsters. Giant rats chasing humans. My bad, gotta go by. Conan the Barbarian gags. Supreme happiness, sleepovers, giant monsters fighting giant monsters, biography pages featuring my big fat head, epic snowball fights, real life Fortnite played on the streets of Wakefield, June being awesome, June being the most awesome and coolest looking ever, more Star Wars gags, intense emotional moments, characters drinking the insides of monster eyeballs with straws because it's a thing they have to do, Book punching, which I don't recommend. The book is an evil book in the series, so don't punch your own books. Super serious face making, love, and cuddles. Some of my favorite things in the series. And so I'm gonna show you <clears throat> just one other thing. This is more embarrassing than Wolverine. Um, this is me when I was in second grade. Um, and so when I was in second grade, I was obsessed with Star Wars, like I said. And I told my mom I wanted to be Han Solo for Halloween. Anybody, does anybody know what Han Solo looks like in the Star Wars movies? Does he look like that? Not at all. Because my mom worked and she was very busy and she was like, I don't really have time to make you like a Han Solo costume. She said, but I can make you like um, a NASA astronaut costume because they go to space too. And that's like the same thing as Star Wars, right? And I was like, no mom, not at all. And she found this big weird helmet at a yard sale and then gave me these ugly blue sweatpants and this ugly blue sweatshirt. And then she made me tuck the ugly blue sweatshirt into the ugly blue sweatpants, which was not cool looking in the 80s and is still not cool looking today, and sent me trick or treating. But I like this photo because it reminds me that when I was young, like even younger than you guys here, um, I was obsessed with adventure and space adventure and dressing up and like playing out action and and stories. And now I get to sort of write stuff like that for kids who are your age and also for kids who are that age, kids who are like the little me. And they, they think that's really cool. So I think daydreaming is okay, that it really, really, really is. Um, I think reading is important. And I also think that um, I've done this, I've done a lot of schools and no matter what, every time, this never gets old. <laughs> Ever. One more slide into the butt. Guys, thank you very much for listening. I don't know if we have any time left for questions or, okay, cool. <clears throat> Five minutes for questions. I'm gonna try to answer what I can. Um, before I do that though, before I forget, so that's the new, oh, sorry, there's a news book. Well, the newest book is, um, is on sale September 17th, but it's actually here today, which I didn't know about and it's crazy. You can buy it three weeks early um, and I'm signing it over there in booth 18, I think, from 2.30 to 3.30. And I was told to say, Get there 10 minutes early because the line is gonna be crazy, which is definitely the biggest jinx ever. 
So you probably don't need to get there 10 minutes early, but that's what I was told to say. Okay, so I'm gonna try to answer your questions for five minutes, all right? Uh, and I'll just call on folks and, yeah. Yeah, how about you, go ahead. I was inspired to write The Last Kids on Earth. What I wanted to do was, I wanted to write a book that I knew that I would have loved when I was a kid. Because when I was a kid, I, like I said, I was sort of anxious and nervous and I would have like crummy days. And the one thing that helped me the most was like escaping, like escapism through movies and books and sometimes video games, but mostly like getting lost in stories. And I wanted to create a story like that. Yeah. All right, how about you? How do I feel about this series being on Netflix? Uh, a lot of things, honestly. Uh, it's really exciting. It's really scary. Um, it's very cool. Uh, um, it's, it's partly exciting and scary because I got to be very involved in it. I got to write some of it. So like a lot of times authors will have like movies or something come out about their books and they're like, that was lousy, but that's just an adaptation. But, like if this is like really bad, like it's my fault. So it's really scary. Um, and it comes out, yeah, it comes out September 17th and I'm gonna be on tour for the book of that point in like some Marriott in North Carolina, like watching it by myself um, on my laptop, which is like just crazy and weird. So, but I'm mostly just really excited and like lucky. I'm like very lucky and very grateful about it. Cause I think it's just important not, it's important to, to remind yourself when you're lucky. It's important when you're, gr to be grateful about that and that's the biggest thing. Even if nobody hates it, it's been, it, nobody likes it, if everybody hates it, whatever. It's been a really fun process, a really fun two years. I got to meet Mark Hamill. I got to like shake Mark Hamill's hand and he read something out loud that I had written. And so now I know what to put on my tombstone, which is like very cool. Um, let's see. Um, I'm for How about you? Go. What's your favorite book? My favorite book uh, like that I've written or my favorite book of all time? Um, that you've read. That I've read. Um, hmm. Hmm. I get this one a lot and I should have a better answer. Um, okay, there's a book called Bart Simpson's Guide to Life, which came out in like 1992. And it was like this like tie-in book for The Simpsons, which should have been like cheap, but was amazing. And it kind of like changed my life. It's the best book. You can still get it on eBay and like it's not in print anymore, but like it's a hardcover and it's, it's just an incredible book. It has like all these like, it shows like Bart's like dream bedroom and stuff. And like, like Homer's like, if he could design his own car, what would it look like? And it has all these like arrows and labels and diagrams and stuff, which I fell in love with. And there's a lot of those in Last Kid, and that's where that came from. So Bart Simpson's Guide to Life. And um, I also love Tintin, and right now I'm reading Amulet. Um, and yeah, yeah. Sorry. And yeah. how many books are you gonna, how many more books are you gonna make? How many books uh, in that series? In this series, there's gonna be, I think, ten total. I kind of know how I want it to end. I don't want it to go on too long and get like, Meh. like I want it to be good. I want it to get like, like lousy. Like when people are like, you know, like something goes on too long, people are like, eh, I didn't like that at the end. So I want it to say, stay good or as good as it is. And um, so I think ten. But I'm, I'm announcing a surprise book soon, which is like a slightly different thing. Okay, but you go ahead. I think we have maybe one or two more. Favorite Adventure Time character? Um, ooh, uh, Marceline by far. Yeah, yeah, Marceline. Oh, hey, yeah, you little dude. I'll come back to you for the last question. Uh, how about you right there? Well, my favorite part of the book writing experience, to be totally honest, being done. Like, I, I like writing is like a job like, and, and I think like sometimes it feels really cool and magical and you get kind of lost in it but a lot of times it's like okay you gotta go to work and I gotta sit down and have my coffee and put on pants and like sit there and do it um, and so that being done and also there are moments when I'm really stuck and when I figure it out that's like the best the best like when you like crack that thing like like it's like how like Edison must have felt when he just or wasn't did he do the light bulb or no did that like reverse Whatever, whoever the light bulb guy was, that's how he must have felt. Um, okay, I think that's it for questions about, right? Um, the time? One more, the grand finale question. How about you, I, I bet you earlier, go ahead. Oh, that's a good question. Will the Netflix episodes retell the, the, the is it gonna like, yeah. So 
the, it's, we start with the special that kind of covers the first book in the series, and that's like a little, like, almost like a mini movie. And then from there, yes, it sort of follows the plots of book two and three, but because it's not told in the first person point of view, like the books are all from what Jack sees, we get to jump around and see like, yeah, there's different stories about like what June is doing, what Dirk is doing, what Quinn is doing, what some of the monsters are doing. And the, the most exciting part actually, yes, about the Netflix series um, is that I think it's gonna get more people to read the books. And um, a lot of, I've heard a lot of people tell me that it was the first book they ever read and like, now they read more books. So, uh, so it's not just a TV show, hopefully it's gonna be a sort of a gateway to reading and that's kind of the most important thing out of all of it. So yeah, guys, thank you very much. Really, I appreciate it. That's all I got. <laughs>